Hey y'all, it's your captain for all things creative. Coming back at you with a Love is Blind season five, episode eight review. And I call this episode the kickback from hell because it was a mess. So if you're new to this channel, welcome. Make sure you like and subscribe. And if you are returning, thanks for rocking with us. And uh, this is just so, so, so much mess to unpack. So let's start. So where we left off, Uche was grilling Lydia about their old relationship drama. And uh, Uche runs after uh, Milton to get in his air next after Lydia, you know, moves away from him for the second time. And then I think he took Milton to the roof since when Lydia was trying to go after them, it seemed like she had to wait in front of an elevator or something because she can't get to them. And uh, Uche just starts painting a picture of Lydia, basically like a stalker who's not over him. He tells Milton how he wants to be honest, but Lydia wasn't honest early in their relationship. And then she lied to him again. And based on what he heard from Aaliyah, she seems to still be upset about him. And really, this is him twisting the facts because Aaliyah did tell Uche that um, Lydia told her, you know, about him, you know, having a Tesla and all these things, stuff that she didn't want to know, and also about them sleeping together three months ago. But for the most part, Lydia was seeming to root for her and Uche. And um, she totally overshared, you know, about, you know, his Tesla and three-story house and all that stuff. And um, the most upset that Lydia did get to Aaliyah was when Aaliyah made the comment about Lydia being able to have Uche if he didn't propose, and then Lydia told her, you know, F you, and that she didn't want him, but really, um, Lydia told Aaliyah that she did not want Uche outright, but, um, Uche is painting this opposite picture to Milton, and he also, um, tells Milton that he would be a fool to say yes to Lydia at the altar, then Lydia finally reaches them, and she yells for Milton to come with her, and then, uh, Milton kind of starts to go off with her arm in arm. And then Uche starts yelling after them, saying, Milton, don't let her control you. So then after Milton and Lydia leave, Uche then takes his smear campaign to the other pot people who are still at the kickback. So he sits in the middle of all the women and the men that were gathered there. And he basically tells them how he blames Lydia for putting them all in this bad situation. He's like, she put us all in this spot because he knows that she followed him to love is blind and wanted them to be in the pods at the same time. And then Johnny starts making faces like Ace Ventura, like she's surprised. And then I don't know where Stacy just takes out her frustrations that she's been building up against Johnny and uh, checks Johnny for you know, making those extra faces. And she's like, why are you reacting like that, Johnny? And then um, Johnny surprised, you know, and then sort of fixes her face a little. She starts making as dramatic expression, but she asks Stacey if she's not allowed to be surprised. So while they two start going back and forth, Uche gets upset that the spotlight is not on him. So he tries to stop them for fine. He's like, let me finish, let me finish. And I'm like, nobody cares. <laughs> about you clearly so then he you know talks after they stop going after each other and he says that he doesn't know which woman um told i guess alia this but he said that um he had heard that lydia said that she felt like she would see someone from her past in the past that it would be fate so he thinks she's either plotting or acting like a fake psychic because she made sure that, you know, she ruined everything that he and Aaliyah would ever have, which is interesting based on his own Instagram post, which we'll talk about in the next video. Um, so then he says that he wants some accountability from Lydia. Mind you, he's acting like he wasn't a part of this whole situation too and hiding stuff and he says he wants Lydia to take accountability or some kind of reckoning 
you know, coming to her, especially since she told Ali about him and he thinks that she wanted another shot with him. So Uche is telling these women all these things. And it's so funny because Miriam, she's here in the top left in the pink dress smiling. She's kind of the hero of the day because Stacy, she, you know, she politely tries to check Uche and correct him because, you know, she's friends with it. She said, hey, I'm going to have to stand up for Libby here. And she basically says that things did not happen on their side of the pod the way that Uche was portraying them to happen, which is accurate because Lydia did not talk about Uche. She kept her mouth shut for a long time until Aaliyah told her that she knew about her and Uche. And that's when, you know, Aaliyah and her cried about it and held hands, said, me and you us never part, you know, all of that. And um, Stacy continues to explain how um, she takes Lydia's side in the situation because Aaliyah first broke down after Uche himself had ripped her a new butthole about her past infidelity. So it was Lydia who comforted Aaliyah and encouraged her to continue to move forward when she was broken up about how Uche had mistreated her and judged her about the cheating, which was the beautifulest the most classiest comeback to Uche because he was acting like it's all Lydia's fault, all the problems that him and Aaliyah had. But really, him and Aaliyah's first fight was because how he talked to her like basically like a child and judged her about cheating for two years ago. So his own toxic behavior was the cause of their first major falling out. And all the women knew that Aaliyah got upset solely because of him and how he talked to her crazy. So then Mary also tries to back Stacy up on that pod story. But then Uche continues to try to question Stacy about her version of Lee and Lydia's pod friendship by asking Stacy, wait, was that before or after she found out about me? And Stacy was like, no, that was before anything about you came up. And then after things about you came up, they held hands and they was crying and all this stuff. So then Mary was still back in Stacia, but then Uche tries to tell Miriam to stay out of it and be quiet. But again, he started a conversation with all the women because he was trying to figure out, you know, who Lydia had said that she felt like she was going to meet, you know, somewhere from the past in the past. But now that things aren't going his way, now all of a sudden he wants some of the women to shut up, right? So then um, Miriam's friend tells Uche not to talk to Miriam like that. But Mary's already activated, and she's not about to let Uche disrespect her like that. So Miriam <laughs> tells Uche, you're not going to tell me when to talk and when not to talk. Keep your toxic masculinity to yourself. And then Uche says he only wants to hear what Stacy's saying, and he gets up. And this is why, because everybody else is sitting down, so I didn't know if he was going to leave or just trying to assert his dominance by standing up. But then he says he's going to go grab another drink. And it's clear that Uche absolutely wanted to smear Lydia and mess up her reputation with everybody else in the pod. But he forgot that Lydia was friends with all the women in the pods longer, so he can't manipulate the story or Lydia's character to the extent that he wants to because, like, these are her homegirls and they saw her heart. And uh, when Uche saw that the women were falling for it, he started disrespecting them and fighting against what they were saying. So when his cross-examination tactics on Stacey didn't work, he started a combination of like retreating and attacking. And he focuses the attack on Miriam by basically calling her bitter. And then I feel like he went in lawyer mode because he starts trying to destroy her credibility as a witness in his case against Lydia because he asked her questions like, do you really live in Saudi Arabia? Do you really live in Houston? Do you really have a job? And things that she had revealed to him on their pod date. Because remember, Miriam and Uche did date briefly in the pods. So Miriam probably knows that Uche is a douchebag, you know. So then um, Miriam stands up because he's, you know, being mean to her. And the other woman tries to hold her back. She's like, listen, you're not going to, you know, try to play me. I do live in Saudi Arabia and Houston, you know, and I have a job and all that stuff. And she asked him to come to her face. And let her read him for the filth that he is, since he won't be able to make her cry like he made Lydia and Aaliyah cry. And then she finishes her read by calling him a loser. So Miriam was just done with Uche. 
and Uche pretend like he was on his phone because he was just embarrassed. And then Milton brings Lydia back to the women and asks the other ladies, you know, to look after Lydia. And then he goes to go get Uche, you know. So while the women confront Miriam, you know, debunk Uche's narrative and say, you know, they know her career is real and they know that, you know, Uche might be a narcissist, right? And Stacey's like, yeah, he's just sitting there pretend to look at his phone, but he knows that he crossed the line. And then Lydia also agrees that, yeah, he's trying to paint a picture of her like she's crazy when he actually, you know, was sleeping with other women the same time they were together. Even though he tried to tell Leah that's the only time he cheated was when he was 18. So Lydia affirms that she knows who she is and she knows who Uche is and calls him garbage. And then she says she's thriving and in love with her fiance. And Lydia said that that's what's bothering Uche. So then leave it to the other lawyer, Johnny, now to ask Lydia if Uche might be telling the truth that Lydia did follow him there. And um, she also says that Uche had came with screenshots, you know, that claim Lydia looked at the stories and all that. And then, um, you know, Lydia, you know, says that she she don't even know what those screenshots and all that was about. And then the other girls laugh and say, well, do you not look at the stories of people who you have in relations with? And they say that they do it too. And Lady says she's just ignoring Uche, right? So then Johnny continues to kind of keep neutral by saying, you know, it's all hard to keep up with between the stories from her, Aliyah, and Uche. Now, for now, I think the women are right because a lot of people do check on other people through social media. Even um, friends, you know, who they might not call their friends in years, but then they'll look at their stories, you know, to see what was going on. It's almost like um, social media is another way to try to figure out what's going on with people. And um, especially in like a romantic situation, people do Google each other, look up each other, you know, to see what's going on and who they're connected to and could it be romantic. And a lot of people do find, you know, if someone could be cheating and things like that through social media, because a lot of people do cheat on social media with apps. But I think Lydia's mistake was not using a Finsta because most people will use a fake account that doesn't show their real name so that people don't get freaked out, you know, when they're looking around. But the fact that Lydia doesn't use a Finsta or a fake account and uses her real account makes me feel like she's not lying even more because she felt like she didn't need to hide if she's using her main account, you know? So I, I actually more lean on Lydia's side, but that's neither here nor there because there's more that's coming out. So we see Uche um, talking to Milton again because Milton went and found him to give him his little five minutes out of the 10 that he said they had left. And then um, Uche basically tells the same story that he had basically criticized Aaliyah for saying, because Aaliyah was the first one that asked, hey, did did Lydia follow you here? And Uche was like, no, why would you ask that? That's crazy, blah, blah, blah. But now he's held on to that story and it's like, okay, let me spread this story. So he's saying that Lydia followed him to the pods and told the girls that she's expecting to see someone from her past. Blah, 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 blah. He then tries to show Milton the screenshots, but Milton doesn't look. He's like, okay, listen, I'm not doubting you. Just keep, finish up talking. So then Uche's like, all right, I guess you don't need to look, but Uche tells him that Lydia wanted them to be there together and that he feels like he would be a bad friend to Milton if he didn't let him know that Lydia really wanted to be there with him. And then um, Uche also tells Milton that Lydia couldn't let him go. Milton then drops wisdom on Uche, which proves that he is more mature than his age would belie, you know. And uh, Milton says that his mom always told him that people's perceptions are what makes their reality. So both him and Lydia have different perceptions of what's going on. Uche then says that, don't you think people's past affects what they do in the future? So what are you going to do if you get into a serious conflict in the future? And how do you think Lydia's going to act? Milton then starts using his engineering brains against Uche's lawyering tactics and says that, 
you know, their situation doesn't fall into a formula like the Pythagorean theorem. And that made me smile because Bill too was just showing that, you know, he's not in the petty world. He's in like analytical math engineering world. And he starts giving Uche the analogy that Uche's like going in the X direction. Lydia's going the Y direction and he's in the Z direction, not even adjacent to their nonsense in the past, which I agree. And then Uche calms down and then asks, well, how good is your communication with Lydia? And then Milton surprises him and says, it's actually really good. So Uche is gagged and then he asks, well, do you think your relationship will last forever or that you're just in a honeymoon phase? And then Milton says he always lived his life in a funny honeymoon phase. And then Uche admits finally that, okay, in the past, I did come to you because I was worried about you hurting Lydia. And he admits that he had asked Milton not to hurt Lydia or play with her. But now Uche says, because they're more serious now, he's now asking Milton to be careful and make sure that Lydia is not in a position to hurt him. And also he wants Milton to not let Lydia come between their friendship. Milton then says what Uche is saying is fair and gives him a pound. And I'm just looking at Uche sideways since I see him smirking and dapping Milton like he ate that whole exchange but really he sounds so contradictory and problematic this whole episode because again it's like he was acting concerned for Lydia in the pod and now he's trying to roast her it's like he's moving very manipulative and like all he cares about is his own feelings because maybe when he was trying to keep it a secret he wanted to protect him and Lydia but now it's out open now he's on a rampage to go after Lydia, and he's the one moving the most deceitful and negative to me. So then um, Milton also walks away like a king and says, hey, I'll text you in the group chat, which means that I guess the guys are still in communication. And um, we next see Izzy and Chris having their own confrontation, which... Oh my gosh, this was also negative and toxic. So, um, Izzy and Chris, the two boys that are left outside of the Uche Milton drama, um, they say to each other, you know, hey, what's going on? And then Chris tells Izzy that he didn't appreciate him telling Johnny that he thought she was a bad person. Izzy then tells Chris that he never said that exact phrase and that him saying that is a red flag to him since it seems like Johnny's still lying to him. Izzy then says he wishes him and Johnny the best but Chris, you know, he's trying to wrap things up peacefully but then Izzy just makes the mess go further by saying that um, you know, even though he wishes all of the best how is Johnny going to tell him that she loved him four times and that she wants him to be, you know, his boy, her boyfriend or whatever, but then come here today and then say that she's glad she's not with me. And I was like, because that was the past. <laughs> but yeah, he's bringing up the past. And then Chris visibly gets him hurt. And he looks upset. He asks Izzy, like, wait, did she tell you that she loved you in the pod? And then Izzy holds up the four fingers in Chris's face and says, yes, she told me four times, you know? And I think that's when uh, Johnny probably saw him when he put his hand in Chris's face. And then um, Izzy does more manipulative talk by saying, yeah, I want y'all to work out, but I had to call Johnny on her mess because you remind me of myself, brother. So then Stacy walks over because I guess she saw you know, is he's handed Chris's face. And she says she um, was trying to escape the Miriam Lydia Uche drama. So she apologized for getting in their business, but she sits right down because I think low key she wants to see why is he's, you know, going off like this. And then Johnny makes it over right when Stacy does, kind of a little bit after, and asks what's going on. So this turns into the double date from hell. Since Johnny immediately goes on the defensive kind and says that she saw Izzy's hand waving in the air and she feels like it's probably the two of them, 
you know, mentioning Stacy and Izzy, trying to convince Chris of a narrative that probably isn't true. Stacy then says, well, he asked, so ask him, basically blaming Chris for starting the whole conversation. And then Johnny asks Chris if he knows that what Izzy and Stacy are telling him are all lies, which is strange because uh, Johnny wasn't there for what they were telling him, but I think she's just immediately on the defensive, or maybe she did overhear some of what uh, Izzy was saying. But then Johnny just attacks Stacy directly and says that she thinks Stacy was deceitful in the pod since Stacy never told Johnny that Izzy was one of her connections. Even though they were, I guess, somewhat cool at first. But then Stacy says everyone knows that it was Izzy for her, which is a license. I think she kept her moves very close to her chest, which I applauded her for doing. But maybe one or two of her very closer pod mates knew. But um, she said that she figured out that her and Johnny were both going after Izzy before Johnny ever caught on last episode herself. And then Stacy contradicts herself to everyone after saying that, you know, everybody knew. She then says, well, she didn't say anything to Johnny because she didn't trust Johnny, which I think made Johnny small because Stacy got caught in a lie in front of Chris. Stacy then hits Johnny with a counterverbal punch by saying that she shed tears for Johnny, knowing that she would get rejected. She also says that Johnny is a poop person, but she said, you know, the expletive. And that she feels bad for even shedding a tear on her. That was kind of brutal. By now, Chris knows that these people don't mean her, Johnny. Well, don't it's Chris knows now that okay, maybe Johnny wasn't overreacting, you know. So then Chris stands up for Johnny and says, Johnny's not a poor person. And then Stacy asks him, Well, why didn't you propose to her then if you really thought that? Ooh, is another mean thing to say because obviously Chris um, had compared notes for Izzy, so he wasn't ready to propose to her then, but now they're dating, so clearly he, you know, values her. So then um, Chris says he didn't propose because there was a lot going on in the moment. And then Johnny says that, yeah, they couldn't get engaged since she went from a breakup to going back to him, to which Izzy gets all mean and says, don't call it a breakup since we were never together. And even though you asked me to your boyfriend multiple times, I never said yes, and I asked Stacey to be my girlfriend. And that was Izzy being mean again because they had dated for a long time in the pod. And he even told Lydia that he dumped Lydia because he was falling for Johnny. But then Stacy eclipsed Johnny as his number one later on. This was in the honeymoon he revealed that. So just the fact that he's acting like him and Johnny were nothing while making all this big stink about Johnny just proves that Izzy is just messy and he's not in touch with his feelings and he's really just being mean. And then, um, whatchamacallit, uh, he and Stacy just start tag teaming and being mean at this point. And then Stacy walks away first while still talking smack. And then Izzy tells Chris that they're good. To which Chris says, all four of us are not good. <laughs> Again, it's like Izzy's not in touch with reality or he's just meaning to be manipulative and make peace with Chris while, you know, in front of Johnny being so disrespectful. But it's not real peace because he's telling Chris hurtful things. So then Chris rejects, you know, this statement of them being good. And Izzy says, no, well, then us two are good. And uh, Stacey and Izzy walk away to the pod crowd and continue to bad talk Johnny in front of um, the girls that were initially com comforting Miriam, right? And um, they say that they're sick of her lies. And then the pod people ask, what lies are you talking about? To which Izzy said, well, Johnny told Chris and me opposite things. And then he calls her sketchy in front of everyone. And this makes me see that um, Izzy was similar to Uche in the sense that he was campaigning to convince everyone to feel negatively about Johnny. The same way that Uche was campaigning to get everyone to feel negatively about Lydia. 
And it's it's sad to watch because Johnny just like starts crying, you know, and Chris tries to comfort her. And actually randomly Uche's there too <laughs> to try to comfort Johnny. And I was like, what is Uche doing here? I guess because everybody rebuffed him. He just uh finds his way to Chris, the nice guy, because obviously Chris wasn't bad mouthing anybody. He's so sweet. And then um, the other girls outside continue to stand up for Johnny. And Stacy just says, Well, they'll never be friends because the other girls were like, Listen, y'all clearly don't see eye to eye. Johnny's our friend, and you're our friend too. So just let it go. And Stacy's like, Yeah, she's never going to be my friend. So we then see Milton and Lydia hug up. I guess waiting for their Uber because they got a dinner date. So Melton was not lying about the 10 minutes <laughs> that he said that Melton had to talk. And then Lydia was explaining to Melton that what Uche told her about the screenshots and everything else was like, you know, a misunderstanding. And I actually find them cute um, because, again, you could tell they're on the same side. But Lydia, you know, he's She's in tears, and uh, she's trying to explain to Milton, you know, that they had had friends in common, which is why maybe those screenshots happened, which I question, but I do wonder, you know, where Uche got the screenshots from. I don't think people approach him about it because multiple people look at your stories. I think Uche probably asked whoever the girls were that he was talking to to check if Lydia had looked at the stories and sent him a screenshot, you know, but, um, yeah, she basically says that they, you know, they're together, and he asked, she asked Milton if he will defend her, and he says that he will, and he says what Uche was talking about was so minute, and then she asked Milton, what does minute mean? Because English is her second language, so this looks cute. And he explains, you know, that minute means small. And it's just a cute moment, and they go off together. Now, um, let me see. Next scene is Izzy and Stacy at their apartment. And this is so cringe to watch because, hold on, I have to go back. That's the slide. Izzy and Stacy are still talking about Johnny and Chris in their apartment together. And he does stop being mean for a second to mention that he got her flowers. And then he said that he's going to always get her flowers on Monday. And this could have been a good segue for them to just talk about their own relationship and their own business. But then Izzy continues to talk about Chris and Johnny. And Stacy tries to redirect Izzy in a mean way by kind of saying, well, she don't want to waste her breath talking about them, but Izzy still pushes the issue. So Stacy asks him, why does he even care about them too? And then Izzy says, because he cares about Chris. Stacy then says that Chris doesn't seem to, you know, like him anymore. And Izzy's in denial about that and says cringily that he got turned on by watching Stacy rail on Johnny. And that made him appreciate their relationship even more. And it's at this point where I was like, Stacy, run away. This man clearly does not respect women. He's taking joy in a woman crying and being embarrassed. You saw he has them trophies of the women's jewelry that we don't know why he's keeping, right? So Stacy then clocks how he's getting most passionate about negativity and mess and then um you know she asked like why is it that you know you could talk about these women that way because she tells him like I'm also a woman you dated in the pod right and that Johnny used to be ahead of her right <laughs> she reminds him that Johnny and him had a serious relationship and how he did used to like Johnny more and that um he needs to watch how he's comparing her to these other girls and if he's thinking that the other girls are crazy and just comparing her as being good for him because she's not crazy, that's not good enough for her. And then she also 
asked, you know, like, well, what about all the things you also promised me in the pods? Like, you was going to cook for me every day and do all these romantic things. And she basically says, you know, what have you done for me lately? Like Janet Jackson said, you know. And um, is he saying, well, he's trying. And then um, she's like, well, you don't cook for me, even though you promised that you would. And then he, like, gets really upset because this argument about what he does for her versus what he promised makes him upset. And I think he went and cried in the closet. And then um, while he's crying in the closet, she's having an interview with the camera people saying that she does what she's supposed to do, but he does not. And then she joins him in the closet and he cries that he feels like he's not good enough for her and he's kind of over it. And then... uh, she walks out the closet and he walks out after that. Mm. Then we see Milton and Lydia in the bed and Lydia is shocked at how Uche treated her. And they compare notes about the night a little bit. Lydia says she was upset because her own self, not Uche. And then uh, Milton says, you know, he had talked about screenshots or whatever, but he don't care. He thinks it's good to ignore BS. And then Lydia basically tells Milton that she can't wait to marry him. They kiss. It's cute. And then um, Stacy is at her job. I think she's like a fitness instructor. And Izzy comes down to her job with a toilet plunger as a gift since they've been through ish, literally. And Stacy had clogged the toilet on the honeymoon, so it was kind of cute. And they talk a little bit before forgiving each other for, like, the fight. Next, you see Izzy telling Stacy's dog to behave the next day since his mom is coming over. Izzy's mom and Izzy talk a little bit before Stacy comes over to finally meet Izzy's mom for the first time. And she brings flowers for Izzy's mom, which is a good thing. And then the mom expresses her reservations that they're not taking marriage seriously because for her, her family, marriage is forever. You know, it's till death do us part. But they both cry and reassure the mom that they're taking it seriously and then she gives them her blessing and then next you see Milton and Lydia driving to Milton's parents house and he admits that he hates bringing people home since his parents are strict and then when we're at the parents house they ask you know what name did he tell you he was and then Lydia says, Milton. And everyone's like, well, in school, he made people call him Milton, but his name is really James Jr. And apparently he's like the fourth James in their family. The father named James, his grandfather named James, all these things. So then the mom starts feeling Lydia about what's the third year old one with a 24-year-old. And then the sister also says that mom's going to do a background check on Lydia. And they're impressed that Lydia's in STEM. That was like one of the good things but then they also say you know that marriage is a business and they need to know that they're serious because they're not sure so then uh the mom asks to speak to Lydia separately and uh, the mother and the sister grill Lydia apart from the whole family and then Lydia does well she's listening well and she's answering the question really really well I was proud of her and the mother basically says that At the end of the day, she can kind of see Milton being ready for marriage now because at first he used to like cling to her a lot. And then she had told him, you know, you're too tall to be clinging on me. You got to stand up for yourself. And then he's like now more independent. She could see it in his attitude and demeanor. And the sister says she's not sure if Milton's ready for marriage though because she knows him well. She knows when he's excited or not. And she's not sure if Milton's excited. So Lydia listens, and I guess she has a mic drop moment, I guess, by saying, well, you know, she's tired of dating and the mess, and she decides to do work on herself, and her prize after doing work on herself was Milton, and I totally believe it, because uh, Lydia's a very good communicator. She's very self-aware. She doesn't seem to be lying or manipulating like Uche and Izzy, and I'm actually rooting for Lydia and Melting, surprisingly, so that was the end of the episode, 
Um, next episode wasn't as exciting, so I'll do the internet drama that Uche, you know, revealed on Instagram and all that with episode nine. But in the meantime, make sure you like and subscribe, say what you thought about the episode. And remember, you are the master of your fate and the captain of your soul.